If you're a fan of Animal Crossing New Horizons, chances are you've seen someone complain about it online and say that New Leaf is the better game. It is kind of crazy how it's still loved by a majority of the fanbase, despite it being over a decade old. That's why I thought it'd be fun to revisit the game in this video and see how it actually holds up. Unlike New Horizons, this game starts on a train, where you meet Rover, and despite being a stranger, he asks for your name and where you're headed. In typical Animal Crossing fashion, this time around you're able to choose your map, which was a first for the series, but you know how you're able to customize how you look in New Horizons, that's not a thing in the older games. Instead, you're randomly assigned a face based on a series of slightly invasive questions, and you aren't even able to pick your skin tone. Thank God the times have changed. And after doing all that, the train pulls into the station of whatever you decided to name your town, and your adventure finally begins. And wow, that character looks just like me. It's like looking in a mirror. Oh, and would you look at that? Isabel is here with some of the residents for a welcome party. How thoughtful of them. What a lovely way to start and already feel at home as a new resi- Mayor? Sorry, what? A am I at the right stop? Yeah, New Leaf was the game with the weirdest gimmick. Through some unknown means, you're now the mayor of your town and are in charge of everything. Despite having no political experience and being a literal child, you're forced to accept the role and head to town hall to complete your registration. You're officially introduced to Isabel, where you learn that she actually has depth and a proper role, working as your secretary and basically doing all the hard work while you go catch bugs or whatever. Now, despite being the literal mayor of the town, you don't even have a house yet. And unfortunately, there aren't any vacant homes left in town for you to move into. Even though they already knew you were gonna move in, I I'm not gonna question it, Never mind. But luckily for us, on the other side of the tracks resides everyone's favorite billionaire, Tom Nook, who's able to help us out by building a brand new home. For people who only played New Horizons, you might be surprised to learn that Tom Nook doesn't actually have a major role in this game. He's the owner of Nook's Homes, a real estate company that focuses on upgrading your players' homes and redesigning the exterior and that's really it. In previous games, your player's home was already built, and you weren't able to choose where they spawn. But New Leaf was the first game in Animal Crossing to let players live wherever they wanted to in town, and you are tasked with building your home from the ground up. And I mean that literally, as after you pick a location, you learn that construction won't start until after you pay your first home loan, and you're forced to live in a tent, despite being the mayor of the town. Tom Nook said no special treatment, you're just like everyone else who moves in, and honestly, I respect that. But with your home situation finally figured out, Isabel is able to complete your citizen registration and officially swear you in as mayor. And to celebrate, you head to the plaza where you're greeted by your five starter villagers and plant a tree to symbolize the start of your new life. So what now? After the town tree ceremony, the tutorial stage of the game is officially over, and there's no clear sign of what you're supposed to do next. You're left to figure it out on your own. No more hand-holding. It could be daunting if you've never played an older Animal Crossing game, but luckily you're in the hands of an expert. And I think there's one obvious thing we need to do right away. Getting out of that fucking tent. I am the mayor of this town, I want a door. Tom Nook is eagerly waiting for a return so we can talk numbers, and in order to pay for a house, we need to drop 10,000 bells at once. Which clearly is isn't affordable seeing as we're broke, so we gotta figure out how to get those bells stat. Unfortunately, we moved into town with nothing in our pocket, so our only way to make money right now is just by selling fruit. It might not be much, but at least it's a good start. The native fruit in this game are the same as they are in every Animal Crossing game, and in my town, I have apples. While shaking trees, you may notice a fruit that looks unfamiliar. It's a perfect fruit, something that was such a good feature, Nintendo decided not to put it in New Horizons. TLDR, it's basically a better version of your town's fruit that sells for more bells. It's a lot smarter to plant the one you find as soon as you can though, so you can get more of them to sell later on. With my tiny pockets full of apples, it's time to sell. You might be thinking of heading to the Nooklings to do that, but you'd be surprised to learn that that's actually a bad idea. Instead, we're headed to Retail. It's ran by Reese and it's the only place where you get 100% of the value of the items sold. If you sell your items to Nook's Cranny instead, you'd only get 80% since they also use retail services to get their money. As evidenced by this conversation and more importantly, the wiki. Retail is also home to the flea market, where you're able to buy items that were put on sale by your villagers, or even sell your own at whatever price you want. It's a good idea to buy the furniture available here at first since they're being sold for much cheaper than what those flop Nook twins would sell it for. Retail is basically Facebook Marketplace, but in person. Sleeping in the corner of the shop is Cyrus, Reese's husband. And spoiler alert, he offers furniture customization services like he does in New Horizons. But you aren't able to access his services until later though, and until then, then.
In every HGTV show I've watched, someone always says you gotta spend money to make money. And that logic applies to Animal Crossing too. Because if we wanna get 10,000 bells ASAP, we gotta get some tools. These can be found over on Main Street at Nook's Crant, I, I mean Nook, Junction, what? Yeah, since Tom Nook is busy girl bossing over at Nook's homes, he's officially passed the shop over to the Nooklings, hence the name change. The junction is the first of many stages of the shop, and as you spend more money, it'll upgrade over time. But for now, we can only buy two pieces of furniture, one wrapping paper, one stationery for writing letters, a fortune cookie, which uses play coins, and two tools. A shovel is always available for purchase alongside either a fishing rod or a net. Speaking of shopping, it's time to give a proper rundown of Main Street. It acts as the shopping district in this game, where every shop, minus retail, is available. When you start off the game, it looks a little barren, but over time as you play, and spend more money, the street slowly upgrades and expands as more shops open up. The Able Sisters is also found here, where they sell clothes, as expected, as well as accessories in the neighboring room which Label oversees. Or LaBelle, I guess, she still went by her stage name in this game. There's also the museum, Nook's Homes, which we saw earlier, and the post office, where you're able to send letters and access your bank account. There are a few more shops to the left that can be unlocked, but you won't be able to until much later on. But now that we have our tools in hand, it's time to earn 10,000 bells to pay off our tent loan. You might be thinking that I'm just gonna catch a bunch of critters to sell, but why on earth would I do that when I could just find the money rock? They exist in this game too. And while searching for the money rock, you may accidentally break open a rock and find an ore. Similar to gold nuggets in New Horizons, you can use them to customize furniture through Cyrus. But since it's the beginning of the game and I'm broke, I'm just gonna sell the one I found. Once you find the money rock and hit it successfully, you will earn 16,100 bells instantly, which is more than enough to pay off your first loan. Which speaking of, let's do exactly that. It is sad that we have to lose our hard earned bells right away, but don't worry, there's an easier way to earn a bunch of bells in the near future. And we're one step closer now that we finally have a house. Well, we still have to wait until tomorrow for it to actually upgrade, but in the meantime, there's one more thing we could do. While chatting with your villagers on the first day, some will mention Isabel and her advice on living in the town. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I already know how to live in a town, but we might as well listen to her anyways. She'll start you off with some stationery that you can use to write letters to your villagers, but you don't have to do that right away, and thank God, because I'm lazy. Then she'll start fantasizing about walking on the beach and how fun it would be to go on a date, I mean, hang out with you for the day, but sadly, she's confined to her 24-hour job for all of eternity. With that in mind, however, if you pick up any shell from the beach and give it to her, she's reminded that there's a life outside of her job that she'll never have and rewards you with a non-native fruit. Oranges in my case. The next task is one of the most important things you can do on your first day in New Leaf. Isabel will start telling you about critter catching and task you with catching either three fish or bugs. Now, Timmy and Tommy do sell fishing rods and nets, but they alternate between the two randomly, so you aren't guaranteed both right away. So if you tell Isabel you wanna catch the opposite of the tool that you have and then tell her you have no way of getting the needed tool, she'll sell it to you for the same price. And just like that, you have a net and a fishing rod on day one. And as a bonus, complete the critter catching task and you'll get a watering can as a reward for free. Another super helpful tool since you won't be able to unlock it until much later on. Now it's time to unwind and relax at home after a tiring day. Oh yeah, we're still in a tent. But when entering it for the first time, Isabel greets you and gives you an old lantern to teach you how to place furniture in your house. And just like that, day one in Animal Crossing New Leaf is complete. What an eventful day. We caught some bugs, did some excavating, paid off our first house loan, and we didn't even start our work as a mayor yet. Which, speaking of... When logging on to your town for the day, you're greeted by Isabel, who actually remembers that you're now the mayor and tells you to return to town hall to get started on your work. Once you step out of your house though, you're greeted by a stranger, a perfect way to start the day. This is Pete, the mailman, who's responsible for delivering your mail, as a mailman does. You will always have a letter on your second day from an unknown sender? Congrats on your newfound mayorhood. To be honest, I was supposed to become the mayor, but one thing led to another, and now it's all up to you. I'm rooting for you. It's never revealed who this letter is actually from, but I have a pretty good guess. I also got a letter from Jitters inviting me to his birthday party on the 2nd of February. Okay. Anyways, Isabel is waiting for us at Town Hall, so we better get a move on. This town is pretty small, so we can head on over right away. Oh my god. 
A new neighbor? I didn't agree to this. If you only played Animal Crossing New Horizons, then you might be shocked to learn that in older Animal Crossing games, you didn't have a say on who moves into your town. Placing down plots where you wanted and going on super long villager hunts? Not a thing in this game. You had absolutely no control over who moves to your town or even where they moved. They would choose their own spot, which can be annoying. They can also leave without permission too. Let's use Butch as an example. Tell me why the game spawned his house right in in front of the bulletin board. I did not realize it was this close. Ew. Ew. Butch, why the fuck would you live right next to the train station? What is wrong with you? Luckily for us, villager number six spawned in a pretty decent spot. And speaking of, who exactly is moving in? Why, it's none other than Julian. A pretty lucky autofill if you ask me. Oh, oh my God. Finally, this is happening. Hello, can you hear me? If you can, follow my voice. Oh, finally, I forgot it happens on day two. Oh, yes, that's right, this way. Sorry to bother you like this. Hello? I was already headed in that direction. Wait, is this right? Wait, not that way, I'm over here. Sorry, I know it's confusing. <laughs> okay, oh, there we go. Oop. What is this, honey? Oh, thank goodness. Well, hello, as you can see, I'm a lamp. This lamp tells you to rescue it by taking it to a quiet area, like our house. And dope, oh, yeah, speaking of, our house upgraded overnight. We have walls now, yippee! When entering your home for the first time, Isabel comes in once again, and this time gives you a tutorial on how to place wallpaper in your home. The wallpaper given to you is the paw print wall, which I like to think Isabel made herself. If you place down the lamp after Isabel leaves and try to interact with it, it doesn't work. But simply leaving your house and re-entering fixes it. Anyways, it's it's time to see what all the fuss is about and rub the lamp. Oh my fucking God, it's a ghost. Nah, it's just Wisp. He's harmless, but extremely useful. In 2016, Animal Crossing New Leaf randomly got an update called Welcome Amiibo, which brought in the ability to scan Amiibo cards so you can invite various villagers and special characters to your town. And you do it via Wisp. Scan any Animal Crossing Amiibo and he possesses their body and transports them to your player's house. You can invite villagers to live in your town this way. And Amiibos are one of two ways to have a 10th villager move in as well. But if you scan in a special type of amiibo, you can invite them to the campground. What's the campground, you ask? It's a little place off to the side of your town where said characters go camping, as you'd expect. The campground is run by Harv, and every day a random special character will be parked for you to visit, alongside any special amiibo you scan in, and you're able to buy various items from them. These items can range from normal ones, to holiday items, to even exclusive items only found by scanning in specific amiibo. In order to purchase these items, you need meow coupons, which you can earn by completing daily slash weekly activities found in your TPC menu. Unlike Nook Miles, however, these don't refresh. Meaning when you complete one of them, you either have to wait until the next day or the following Monday for it to give you a new one. So it could take a very long time to grind up these Nook Miles. I mean coupons, this is Animal Crossing New Leaf. With that out of the way, let's finally head to Town Hall and figure out how to abuse our power as mayor, as any government official would. You talk with Isabel and she's about to go over what you're able to do until she remembers that you actually aren't technically able to do anything until you get your town development permit, which requires more hard work. Yay! You'd think Isabel would have been more prepared for this, seeing as it's her job, but, um... Yeah. In order to get the permit, you need to have upgraded from a tent to a house and gained the approval of the citizens. Currently, we have a 15% approval rating, but in order to get the permit, it's gotta be at 100%, which means it's time to suck up to our villagers. There are many ways to gain 100% approval, and the easiest things to do right away are to change the town's tune and the town flag. Sure. <laughs> For anyone who's only played New Horizons, you're about to gag at the number of custom designs you get in this game. I am about to expose it right now. That's it. You only get 10. I always give the rose flag, but honestly, I'm kind of in the mood to do the stag beetle one instead. Wow, it's perfect. It really captures the spirit of Nook Tits. Yeah, the bugs just like Tom Nook. Other ways of boosting your rating involve simply playing the game. You can write a message on your town's bulletin board, donate critters to the museum, sell items at retail, pick weeds or water flowers. But if you really wanna make progress, the best thing to do is to talk with your villagers. Once you make it to this stage of the game, you'll realize that your villagers now feel more comfortable 
comfortable around you and immediately take advantage of your friendship by getting you to do things for them. Completing villager requests is the best way to rack up points for approval, and you're able to do many of them in one day if you're patient enough for it. I pretty much spent a majority of day two running around and talking to my villagers, hoping they would ask me to do something for them. I caught a centipede for Eric and visited Gladys's house because she wanted me to. Butch wanted me to give a gift to Jitters, which ended up being a shirt that actually looked pretty good on him. And then Gladys wanted me to bring Jitters over to her house because she wanted to talk to him. Clearly Jitters is quite popular around the town, which made it super exciting when he asked to come over to my house. Achoo! You're gonna come into my home and spread germs? Who the fuck raised you? Who raised you? Uh oh, something may have gone fl- uh, Nasty, nasty man. Uh uh, you need to leave. You need to leave right this second. How fucking dare you? Who raised you? And after all of that hard work, we finally made it to a 100% approval rating. Suck it up goes a long way. But in typical Animal Crossing fashion, we have to wait until tomorrow for our permit to actually arrive. So we're left to our own devices for the rest of the day once again. And luckily for us, we have a visitor in the plaza. It's everyone's favorite scammer, Red, here to sell us artwork for the museum. Sadly, I'm broke at the moment, so I didn't buy anything from him. And why am I broke, you ask? Because all the money I earned for the day went to paying off my second home loan of 39,800 bells, silly. Yes, I am grateful to finally have a house, but look how tiny it is. I deserve a bigger one. I know it seems a bit much to upgrade your house once again, but there's a really good reason to do this as soon as possible. If you manage to pay off your house, the day before, you'll be greeted by some old fuck when you boot up the game. It's Tortimer, the man who used to be the mayor before you. Now that he's retired, he's living his life on some tropical island far, far away. He tells you to visit sometime and meet him down by the dock to learn how to get there. Isabel mentions that she's also been invited, but never has time to go because she's a prisoner to the government desk job. I got a few goodies in the mail today because of the house visits from yesterday. And speaking of house, mine is even bigger now, and it's the same size as a villager home. And speaking of villagers home, Julian's officially moved in. Hi! Oh my god. What? It can't be. On the day I move in, I meet the great Vis. Ooh. He already knows who I am. How fun. I'm really glad I got to meet the guy who's helping make this town such a cool place to live. That's why I came. Nook Tits is like a magnet for cool people now. It drew me all the way here. So true. So true. Julian. Julian. But more exciting news, we can finally talk to Tortimer and gain access to the tropical island. But we can't actually start going until tomorrow. So time to play the waiting game once again. Yeah, Animal Crossing New Leaf is the epitome of slow burn gaming. If you're someone who hates waiting, well, you could just time travel. I don't really care how you play. But me, on the other hand, I would rather just spend the day doing some digging and catching a pale chub for Gladys since she wants one. And sure, I could have donated it to Blathers instead, but at this stage of the game, Blathers' approval means nothing to me, and I would rather seek validation from my villagers instead. But if you are trying to unlock Celeste and Brewster, maybe donate anything you find to Blathers right away. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. If you head over to Nook's homes after your second house upgrade, you'll be introduced to Lyle. He's a piece of shit. Basically, he runs Happy Home Academy and judges you on how you decorate your home. You're able to talk to him whenever if you want advice on the best way to earn the most HHA points, but I don't give a fuck. I want to decorate my home the way I want to. It's my house. Fuck you, Lyle. You also unlock Digby. He offers the ability to visit other players' homes that you acquired through Street Pass, but more importantly, he's Isabel's twin brother. Do y'all remember Reggie's house? I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. I wanted to put something up for sale at retail just to show off the feature. And originally, I was gonna use some furniture I had lying around until I realized you could put up a pitfall seed for sale and I thought it'd be funnier to do that. So I think the proper math is you're supposed to multiply it by four. Yes. So it's y equals 4x minus one less than 10,000 bells. So basically just multiply this by four, that's 40 bells. That's like the best price to put it up for sale. It's like the max price that villagers are willing to buy it for. Anyways, remember how you're the mayor of the town? Well, you can finally start being a mayor now that we have our town development permit. You're able to do two things as mayor, enact ordinances which influence the lifestyles of your residents and build public works projects. Public works projects are features and buildings that you can place around your town. If you're a fan of decorating, this is your main way of doing it. Right away, you get access to a couple of bridges and
and various things you're able to place immediately. The campsite is also an option, which is the other way of having a 10th villager live in your town. More will be unlocked as you play the game. Villagers will ping you sometimes and request specific projects depending on their personality types. I decided that the first project to embark on will be this yellow bench. It's cute, and more importantly, the cheapest one available at the moment. Isabel will follow you around as you try and figure out where to place it. It can be a little finicky to place it exactly where you want, but with enough patience, you'll get there eventually. I settled on putting this bench behind Butch's house, and clearly he's excited for it, as you can see. Lloyd will spawn wherever you decide to place your project and collect the bells required, and Isabel will let you know that it's worth finding these projects by yourself, because your villagers are broke and useless to you, despite all you do for them. Breathing underwater is rather easy, assuming you have gills. Interesting. That was an interesting fortune. Fortune number 14. Do we think it's a winning ticket? It better be a winning ticket, baby. Ah, congratulations. Oh, it was. I actually didn't know that. Good. The number 14 is a blue Pikmin. Ooh. <laughs> you can just cosplay as a Pikmin and you leave. New Horizons could never. I just wanna show off the skirt real quick. I'm actually gonna buy this. So it's the Pep Squad skirt. It's basically a tennis skirt. I would like to try it on, please. Oh, well, I guess it's okay to be more adventurous sometimes. Look what happens when I run. <laughs> Your hands just go up and you basically run like a girl. Day four began with a letter from my mother. She's wishing me well on my new life as an independent child and has no idea that I accidentally became mayor of some small town, by the way. Your mom gives you a random item in this game each time she sends a letter. And luckily for me, I got a whole ass couch. How Pete stuffed it into my mailbox? I don't know, he's a pelican that speaks English. Nothing in this world makes sense. I got a lot of new items these last few days, so I spent the morning redecorating my house. Most of the items I managed to get seemed pretty normal, so I was actually able to put together a cute space. Monique came over to my house the other day and forgot something. Oh, so Monique's very social with you, just not me. Okay, so Monique hates me and she wants me to die. Would you mind giving it to her for free? Um, girl, she's like literally right over there. But, oh, <laughs> she's Literally right there. Miss ma'am, are you serious? You probably spent all morning looking for her. And when you finally gave up and asked for help, that's when Monique decided to show. I don't know why Gladys wrapped up the item that you left at her house, but sure. Wait, this is something I lost. What is it? It's a shirt. It's my subdued print tee. I thought I'd never see this again. You left a shirt at Gladys's house? Why did you take it off? Interesting. Where's Miss Gladys? We have to go tell her. Um, what happened? Hello? Where did she go? <gasps> oh, we have another neighbor moving in. Um, this is now going to be our seventh villager, I believe. Yes, we have six currently. And the seventh villager that will be moving in tomorrow, February 1st, is Peanut. Oh, okay. That's the second villager to move by retail. Interesting. I chose to live near retail and now everybody who's moving in is deciding to live near retail as well. What can I say? I'm a trendsetter. While spending the day earning bells for the public bench, I ran into Sahara, who's another special character who visits from time to time. She offers wallpaper and flooring for your house and for some reason won't accept your bells until you bring her home. Okay. Once you take her home, she accepts your bells and then kicks you out. Wait, what? In older Animal Crossing games, you get a completely random wallpaper and flooring that you aren't able to see until after Sahara puts them up. And I got these ones. I need to be more responsible with my money going forward. Back to money grinding we go. Nope, never mind. Butch needs help with something. He wanted a new greeting to soften up his image, which is ironic considering his name is Butch. And I settled on Butch Queen Hey. All right. Now let's focus on earning the 30,000 bells we need, which really didn't take that long seeing as I already had 8,000. So all I really needed to do was find the money rock and sell some fruit, fossils, and ore, and some other items I got from completing villager requests. And with the bells donated, the new bench will be available tomorrow, which means even more waiting. Woo! 
More importantly, on day four, if you head down to the dock, you'll find Cap'n waiting for you on his boat to take you to the tropical island. It costs a thousand bells, you aren't able to bring anything along, and you have to sit through Cap'n singing, but it's worth it, trust me. Once we arrive at the island, let's ignore everything inside it first and head to the back. As you can see, the island is always set to summertime, so if you started up a town in the winter and are looking to complete your museum, you'll be able to make a ton of progress early on as you now have access to every critter that's available in the summer. You'll also find some unique fruit only available here. In my case, I have coconuts, how fitting, and lemons, but there are a ton of other tropical fruit that you can randomly get as well. You're also able to bring all these items back to the mainland using the basket by the entrance. It can carry up to 40 items at once. There's also the rest of Cap'n's family who run various services on the island. Cap'n's daughter, Leela, is a waste of time. Cap'n's mother, Grams, on the other hand, sells exclusive items such as the mermaid and cabana furniture series, as well as a wetsuit. In New Leaf, this is your only way of getting one, and it costs 40 medals. In order to earn medals, you gotta participate in island tours, which you can access via Leilani, Cap'n's wife. And I know I'm gay and only attracted to humans, but why she kinda... Anyways, you're able to choose from four tours to play each day. And in my case, I had hide and seek, which is fairly simple. Four random villagers hide, and you have to seek them. Spoiler alert, it's my favorite one. Balloon hunting involves popping down as many balloons as you can. Ore hunting requires you to dig up as many ores as possible, with one random ore being worth more points than the others each round. And shellfish free-for-all requires you to find shellfish via diving. You can also find other tropical fruit while you're completing these tours. This is good, wholesome fun, unlike those newfangled space age video games you play. Shut up, boomer. Oh, ow. That better not be who the fuck I think it is. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't talk to me. Nuts, you got me. Nuts is what I'm gonna kick. The ones on your body. If you try and speak to me again, Curly, get the fuck away from me. I say that as I'm walking away from him. Now, where the hell are these rocks? That's a normal rock. That's also a normal rock. Wow. What a great start. Here's another one. That's a normal rock as well. What the fuck? Whoop. Whoop. Look, this is a jellyfish. Um, <laughs> and they can sting you. What? <laughs> For what reason? I don't know. No, 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 I was right there. I was right there. I could have made it eight. Ugh, that's fine. You found seven of your target items. Incredible. You earned a gold Tortimer Island award. I still ate. It's okay. I didn't get eight points, but I still ate. Depending on how quickly you're able to complete the tours, you can earn up to seven medals each time you play. And if we want that wetsuit that costs 40 medals, we gotta earn gold awards six times. And after playing the hide and seek tour like four more times, I managed to get 40 medals relatively easy, which means we can finally go diving on the mainland. If I time this correctly, woo, oh. If I time this correctly, woo! <laughs> we can go diving properly. Every single time Butch is the one at the home screen, by the way, the first thing he does is go stare at that bulletin board. Is that the reason why he moved in front of it? So that he could just look at it every day. This man is glued. This man is obsessed with that bulletin board. He wants to know what the T is. Yeah, I guess we could start off by saying hi to Peanut. She's right here. This house is like kind of Barbie core. I kind of respect that. And here she is. Oh, she's just standing in a corner staring at us. Do you live in this town? I'm Peanut. I just moved here. I've heard things are pretty lively in Nook Tits these days, so I just had to be a part of it. Yeah, when we last left off, uh, we paid off the bench. And in this game, Similar to how it is in New Horizons, you're able to do a little special thing once you finish a public works project. This is the most small town bullshit that could happen in this game. The fact that Isabel threw together an entire celebration ceremony for the fact that the town has a bench now. It's really funny too because bam, bam. <laughs> You know, you saw there was a do not enter sign available as a public works project. And there's also various street signs that you're able to put. They do ceremonies for those too. You, oh, hello. Why is he just staring at me? Place your bets down below right now. Is he going to have an actual conversation with us? Or is he just going to ask me to do something for him? Can I come hang out at your place today? Yeah, after 1 p.m., uh, that's like an hour from now. I mean, I guess I'll do it at 1, but I make no promises that I'll commit to this this time around. We already saw how it works out in this game, so 
If y'all see me ignore this request, um, no, you didn't. Try shaving your face and have bare skin out and then go running. Oh! <laughs> I hate to ask you for a favor, but you, could you please run a delivery for me? You see, I found something that Butch lost. Are you and Butch like not on speaking terms? Because he's literally coming this way. I mean, I can't, oh, <laughs> he's literally in frame. Girl, Monique, Butch of all people. I thought she was gonna say Gladys or something. Deliver it before the end of the day today, okay? Why don't you come with me? Let's go deliver it to Butch together. Look at this, Monique. Why don't you turn around? Oh no, she's gonna walk away. Of course she's gonna walk away. Something I left over at Monique's place. How the fuck did you leave wallpaper at Monique's place? What were you doing? Were you sampling wallpaper for her house? Are you like a property brother or something? I thought I lost it for good. Yeah, me when I forget my wallpaper at somebody's house. Would you buy this from me for $17.24? Excuse me? That's overpriced in this economy. Hell no, I don't want it. What do you mean? Were you trying to sell the wallpaper to her? What was your strategy there? That's a horrible sales technique. The beret is kind of cute, but I don't know. Maybe you could wear this. Wait, how about this look? Oh, yes. Okay, the Pikmin hat does stay on. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> no, we have to change into that immediately. Like, that looks amazing. Oh, this outfit is just getting better and better by the day. Hell yeah. Eric, I'm going to just slightly nudge him over to my pitfall seed. Ooh. <laughs> and then he's going to walk over and stare at it. And then if you talk to him, I can't believe I found a pitfall seed. This must be a sign. But it is a bit pricey. Hmm, should I go for it or hold off? You should totally go for it, babes. I hear you. Sometimes you just gotta treat yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, not me and my scammer era. The government in real life would be so proud of me, scamming my villagers out of their money. Let's actually do the ordinances. I was gonna do this the other day, but I completely forgot that they're worth 20,000 bells in this game, not 10K. I don't know why I thought it was that. So there's the beautiful town one, early bird, night owl, and wealthy town. Wealthy town, you get more bells for when you sell items, but items are also worth more at shops, so you have to spend more money. Night owl, things close three hours later. Early bird, things open three hours earlier. And the beautiful town one, weeds stop spawning. You don't get trash in your rivers anymore. Flowers have a better chance of breeding for hybrids. And in New Leaf, they also don't wilt and die. That's the one that I'm gonna enact because that's always the one that I like to use because I love decorating. Uh, especially with flowers, because that's really the only way you can decorate a new leaf. Yeah, I like to put this one into law because it's cute, it's fun, and I'm just an aesthetic girly. What can I say? <sighs> I committed the biggest cardinal sin a YouTuber could make, forgetting to hit record. Luckily, in new leaf, autosaving isn't a thing, so I figured what's the harm in just resetting the day and starting over? Big mistake. Brace yourselves because in older games, if you ever decided to quit the game without saving, you're greeted by I I Isabel. Oh, never mind. I guess I'm in the clear. Wait, what? Holy f Oh, wait, he's not going to delete my save file in this game. Oh, never mind. It turns out there's been a ton of budget cuts, and because of that, Rossetti is now jobless. Nobody tell him what happens to him in New Horizons, by the way. But seeing that you're mayor, he proposes an idea that could help him out and save his job. Building a new reset surveillance center via town donations. I would love to show it to you, but unfortunately, Town Hall is closed today. Why, you ask? Because it's Groundhog's Day, and Isabel is out in the plaza to celebrate. The fact that Rossetti is also the mascot for the day and you get a mini Rossetti model from Isabel, and yet this very government fired Rossetti and still uses his face for their own monetary gain? So sick and twisted. The fossils are spawned in the same place, so there's something actually that we need to show off right now. I'm really hoping it's still in the same spot. I was recording for quite a bit. There was a new villager in town, um, and that villager is... <laughs> <laughs> this is Nook Tit's core right here. Shari, our peepee -pee hand queen. How's your morning, Vis? I hope it's great, Slacker. Oh, so what's going on? Have you noticed that Jitters is like super stylish? I'm always asking him for fashion tips. Jitters? 
jitters of all people, really? We've bonded over our mutual adoration of fancy clothes, but I hope our friendship grows deeper. Not that fashion is shallow or anything, but I like to talk about serious stuff too, you know? Um, there's a little sneaky introduction to like the gossiping that's in New Leaf. Yeah, so I think the t beautiful town ordinance is in effect, right? It should be, oh. Right. Oh, I completely forgot about this. Oh, ooh, the first official shop unlock has happened on Main Street, I guess six days. I think it's related to Nookling Junction and how much bells you spend at Nooks, basically. I am realizing right now, though, that I have a fossil in my thing. Um, what if I just, cause you know, fossils in like similar to how they are in New Horizons. If you give fossils to your villager, I'm pretty sure it boosts your friendship up in this game too. So, I mean like, yeah, I could actually go and like do some proper shopping or whatever, but. I mean, for like jitters of all people. Hey, this, thanks for coming. Take a look at this place. It just screams birthday, doesn't it? Oh my God. This is how birthday parties work in New Leaf. Oh my God. Wait, of course Butch is the one to throw the party. These two have been all up in each other's businesses. Since I moved into the island, it's like it's like pretty much confirmed at this point that they have a little something something going on. Oh my God, these two are just all up in each other's business once again. Oh my God, time and place. Look at this man all up behind him. He will not let go of him the entire time. Wow, sorry for interrupting. Clearly y'all were trying to have a moment right now. Oh my gosh, I'll be in and out quick. Oh. So you're here to celebrate with us as well. Like, look, he looks pissed. He's like, why the fuck did you come in now? I'm just here right now because I would like to give a gift to Jitters. It's a fossil. What? Oh, wow, you got me a dinosaur track. This present is beyond anything I could have wished for. Seriously, thank you. I'm so happy, this. You're welcome, Jitters. I'm so happy sports drink is falling from my eyes. Okay, um... Jitters, you really just have a way with words, don't you? There's a rumor going around that you're a freshman mayor. I know. Monique, you are easily one of my favorite villagers on the island at the moment until Shari moves in tomorrow. Oh, not you trying to pin me up against the, oh. Oh my God, Monique, I didn't know you were like that. Damn. Monique, can you actually say something exciting for once? How do I look today? Girl, we already, you're wearing the same damn shirt every single day. What do you mean, how do I look today? Can you say something else? Can you actually say something else for once now? Oh, oh, not the trauma dumping, hello? Is there anything? I, <laughs> I do like this item right here, the HMD. Um, what do you guys think? Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? I think I'd like to keep it on, please. Yeah, yeah. I thought this outfit couldn't get any more iconic, but here we are. It can't get any better than this. This is exciting. This is amazing. I'm obsessed. You know what? To celebrate this awesome moment, I mean, I think it's only fitting that we commemorate this amazing outfit that we have on and finally take a photo for our TPC. You need this for online play, but the online is shutting down in three months. So three, two, one, bam. Yes, this is amazing. I love this. We have made it to the end of the week. And what better way to start day seven than by saying hello to one of the best villagers in the game. And remember yesterday when we learned of the mistreatment of Rossetti? Well, now that town hall is opened again, we can finally see the new public works project we unlocked. It's a manhole cover that costs 365,000 bells. What? Rossetti in this game is optional. Uh, cause in older games, he was always there. And if you reset your town, he would get mad at you. But in this game, they made it an optional feature because parents used to complain that Rossetti made their kids cry. They downgraded Rossetti even more in New Horizons, which I just think is completely unfair. Rossetti deserves better. I don't know. He was always one of my favorite characters in the game. I don't know. I just really love like angry men, like angry men acting like a fool because everybody's pissing them off. Like that is so me coded in a way. And I think that's why I respect that. Ooh, I just barely avoided another pitfall seed. I didn't even mean to do that. I don't know why I thought it was yes. Oh. Oh, that's not. Julian, my man, how's it going? Okay, so how about you do me a big favor? Ooh, he's all up in my face too. So that's how you know he's serious. Right now, I just really want an apple. I know it's growing here in town, but I don't have anything to wear for fruit picking. 
Do you think you can help me and get one? Um, why yes, kind sir. I will do that right now, in fact, actually. Uh, I don't have anything other, any other important. Oh my God, wait, by the way, I love that there was an apple right here. He could have just picked it. I get that he wasn't dressed accordingly, but like, girl, no one would have saw. Julian, you're still a perfect, beautiful, gorgeous villager. And I think a perfect, beautiful, gorgeous villager deserves a perfect, beautiful, gorgeous apple. Oh my goodness, is this really a perfect apple? Mm, it smells so good, I gotta take a bite right now. That fruit made my taste buds very happy, Glitter. So let me do something for you. Here's a gift for your trouble. It's a ball return. Is that a euphemism? Is that actually what I think it is? Oh my God. He literally just had that ready to go as a reward. I mean like, thanks, I guess. I hate to ask you for a favor of this, but could you please run a delivery for me? You see, I found something that Butch lost again. Didn't we just do this? I mean, I'll take care of this, but what is up? with Butch losing things. And what is up with Monique finding them? Hello, hello, I have another Butch special delivery. Hell. Butch Queen, hey! Huh, it's something I left over at Monique's place. Oh, it's a shirt this time, okay. My orange tie-dye tank. I thought I'd lost it for good, so I just bought a new one again? That's how you know this is a habit of his. The fact that he's losing items so often that he just goes and replaces them instead of trying to find them. And now he's gonna try and sell it to me again. Um... Girl, you have a problem. You need to deal with your problem on your own. I can't help you out here. Sorry. Let's... Oh, can you stop? Girl, tie your fucking shoes. Another exciting thing that's unlocked is Leaf's gardening shop. You can now buy two flowers, a tree, and either an axe or a watering can each day, and it's a limited supply. Yeah, in New Leaf, you were only able to buy one tree per day. Meaning if you wanted to have a forest in your town, you would need a lot of patience. Or you could use a save editor, I don't care. After doing some more shopping, I logged into town later in the evening to find that there was a meteor shower. And now that it's nighttime, I figured we would end the day off by heading to the tropical island once again. And once we arrive and head to the back, it's time for what many would consider the best part of Animal Crossing New Leaf, catching a bunch of rare beetles and selling them for insane profits. Little tip. If you remove all the plants aside from the palm trees, it'll increase the amount of rare beetles that spawn. Chop them down, chop them down. <gasps> Are you kidding me? I had to get the rare stump here. I didn't even know you can get them on Tortimer's Islands. Yeah, this is a rare stump. They were exclusive to New Leaf and you had a rare chance of finding them. And I think mushrooms spawn by these stumps over here. And sure, it took me a while to get a bunch of bugs and it didn't help that my character kept falling for some reason. Oh my God, stop falling down, especially right now. This is not good for my game, but you know what it is? Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Oh, I can't fuck this up right now. Nah, I have to catch this. Oh, are you kidding me? My net hit the tree. Oh, that was a golden stag. That was one of the, oh. Wait, is that another one? That can't be another one. No way. Oh my God, it is. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to head back to retail. Bitch. But baby, it was worth it because I ended up making 178,000 bells in one night. And that wasn't even with the full basket. That's way more than enough to pay off my next house loan. So that's exactly what I did the next day. And just like that, I have a house that's now bigger than all of my villagers' homes. Oh, and I also got a space captain seat from the shooting star I wished on. Thanks, Wishy. And with that, we've made it to the end of my first week in New Leaf. Obviously, the game is quite slow burn, so I was wasn't able to show off everything within the first week, but if you're interested, maybe I could do a part two. You can let me know by subscribing. That's very helpful. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this style of video. It's very different from what I normally do, but I had a lot of fun making it. So thanks for watching. And now I'm gonna go rest my voice because I did so much yapping in this video. It's quite tiring. <laughs>